Right, we are beginning our discussion now um, once more because we had a couple of challenges earlier on um, somehow with the sound, but now the sound has been sorted out. Okay, so we are interested in solving for X. And if we want to solve for X, there are a couple of things we need to consider. How do we solve for X? And that is one thing that remains extremely important for us. Okay, look at the first question. Um, x minus 3 into x plus 2. Tando gave a suggestion. And uh, we were given x plus 3 into x plus, or x minus 3 into x plus 2 equals 0. And Tando was able to realize that uh, we have two solutions, uh, x equals 3 or x equals minus 2, using the fact that if the product of two numbers is uh, 0, or the product of two expressions. In this case, it is the product of two linear expressions. And if the product is equals zero, it actually means that um, x minus three equals zero or x plus two equals zero. Okay, now, and this obviously by transposing minus three, it means that x equals three or x equals minus two. We went on to look at this particular question right now. Um, if you look at this particular question, what do we have here? Anyone, any suggestion on how to solve for x in this case? We okay. first have yes. to transport 6 to the other side. We need to first transport transport 6 to the other side of the equal sign. That what, that's what Tando thinks. And, I mean, it is correct to do so. Okay. Right. Okay. So anyone else? Okay. Yeah. I mean, Tando is right. That is what we can do. Um, I would imagine that at this point, uh, we can have a couple of suggestions. Okay. Let's first multiply X by X. If multiply X, what is X times X? It is X squared. X, X squared. squared. Right. And then we have X times two which is twice x, minus 5 by x. 2x. Yes. Okay, I'm happy that you are participating. Awesome, excellent stuff. Right, okay, let me see. There's a small comment. Okay, now you can hear me, guys. Okay, I'm excited. Minus 5 times 2. What is minus 5, minus five times 2? We get negative 10. Equals minus six. And obviously, Tando is right. We can therefore have x squared. What is 2x minus 5x, anyone? 3x. Minus 3x. Negative 3x. Yeah. What is minus 10 plus 6? A negative 4. Negative 4. Okay, what are the factors of this here? How do we get the factors of this? We first gonna look for a number that when you multiply, you get negative four, and when you add them, you get negative three. Yes, okay. Um normally we do it like this, and obviously you are right there, Tando. Right. Normally we multiply x squared with minus four. We always multiply this with minus four. That is the strategy we use here. And we get minus 4x squared. And after that, we look for factors of minus 4x squared that give minus 3. And those factors are minus 4x together with x. Because minus negative. 4x, yes. Yeah. Minus 4x plus x, they give us minus 3. Okay? So we're good. And then it means that we have x squared minus 4 x plus x minus 4 or equals 0. I know some teachers do not teach it like this, okay? So it's different, but uh, this is the best way to factorize quadratics, okay? Right, so now we factorize uh, the, we take out the highest common factor in the first two expressions, taking out x, and we have x minus 4 plus into x minus 4 equals 0. So we have x into x minus 4 plus um, x minus 4. So then we have um, x into x minus 4 plus x minus 4 equals 0. 
which means x minus 4 into x plus 1 equals 0, which means that x is 4 or x is minus 1. Okay, so these are sort of the uh, solutions to the problem. And uh, now we have exactly these as the solutions to the problem. Right, so any question on this? Who has a question here? In other words, we started here. We were solving for X. We're yet to do more examples. So Saturday, we shall spend more time. Um, today is our test discussion. So yeah, but just try to follow through. Okay, we're gonna, we are recording this lesson. So you're gonna have a chance to watch this lesson and, um, and replay and so on and so forth. Okay, now let's look at the next question. Let's look at the next question. Right, number three, we have the question x squared equals nine. If x squared equals nine, what are the solutions here? Anyone? What do we do here? Anyone, please? Anyone? Are you sleeping? Uh, we find the square root of nine. We find the square root of nine. Find the square root of nine. Can you hear me? Yes. Is it Yolanda? Yes. Okay, Yolanda, right? So it's gonna be. Yes. Be, yeah. What do you think, Yolanda? Yes. Yes. Please talk to us. Talk to us. It's gonna be. It's gonna be x squared equals to x squared equals to three squared, which is equivalent to nine. Okay, yes, x squared equals three squared. We agree that three squared is equivalent to nine, right? Okay, because three squared is like three times three. Okay, good. Then what do we do next? Anyone please, anyone, you talk, you talk, just talk. You don't wait for me to say, um, talk, um, so you just say, because they, you can hear that no one is talking. So now, then, yeah, what do we do next? And then I think since we are solving for X, the other two is going to cancel each other. And then we'll have three, uh, X is equals to three since we, since we're looking for the value of X. Right. There's something we call, um, different of two squares. What is different of yes. two squares? What is different of two squares? Anyone? Difference of two squares. What is the difference of two squares? Anyone? Okay, the, the difference of two squares means that if you have a squared minus b squared is a minus b into a plus b, correct? So we can use that here. Okay, but one way to do this if you have squares is which kids find very easy is to say, you take the square root on the left, you take the square root on the what? On the right, because you want to remove the square. But when you take the square root, you put a plus or minus. So that if x equals plus or minus, what is the square root of three squared? It's like the square root of nine, which is what? Which is three. So three. the answers, yeah. So the answers are two of them. So there is either x equals three or x equals minus three. So you write x is three or x is minus three, like that. So okay, we're getting two answers to these. Okay. Any question, people? But you see, I must indicate that it's not the only way to the question. Another kid from another school can do this differently. They can just take the x squared and then take three squared like that. So they can take the three squared to the other side and then use the difference of two squares from grade 10. Because if you have a squared minus b squared, it is a minus b into a plus b. So here you would have x minus three into what? Into x plus three equals what? Equals zero. Okay. And when the, once the kid gets to these, they get x equals three or x equals minus what? Minus three, you get the point. 
So, so the kid therefore gets x equals three or x equals minus three. Yes. So you can use the the difference of two squares, or you can just apply the square root on both sides and put plus or minus there. Okay. So we get into the same answers because we're getting we're getting the x equals three or x equals minus three. Do you see that? Okay. Next question. Okay, this 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 lesson is recorded. We're recording this discussion. I'm gonna send you the recording of this discussion at the end. Okay, so yeah, next. So everything here, even if you don't copy, you're gonna have this discussion. Let's look at this one. What about if we have x squared? Right, let's look at x squared equals, now if we give you x squared equals this one. x squared equals x. What do we do here? Anyone? Anyone want what to What I would x? do is to take x to the other side. Is to take x to the other side of the equal sign. Like so. Correct. Then I factorize x since it's the common factor. Yes, then you take the highest common factor. And that means x is 0 or x is what? Is 1. Is it correct? All right, so we're done. Too easy. Okay, so if in your land agrees, it's too easy, right? Okay. Uh, Saturday, Saturday, 4 p.m. Saturday, 4 p.m. We shall continue, but we are going on today. We're practicing a lot of things until for the next one hour. Right. So what about if we give this particular question? Five X squared plus six X minus seven equals zero. Okay. What are the values of x here? Anyone? We first have to look for the product and sum. We have to look for the product and sum. Well done, the Tando. Is Tando talking, right? Okay. Yes. We agree with you, Tando. You need to first look for the product and sum. And therefore, now, what then do we get here? And so at this point, uh, what is the product and what is the sum here? Uh, our product is uh, neg negative 35. It's negative 35, and you can see that if you do negative 35, you can't get 6. So now you use the quadratic formula. Use what? The quadratic formula. What does the quadratic formula say? Anyone? Yes. You're, you're right, Tando, but just that this one um has... You can't, because it's going to give minus 25, but there are no factors that are going to give 6. So if you can wait, wait. If, if, if ever it, it becomes, if you use the correct formula, x, x equals minus b plus negative. Yes. Like this, right? Of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Good. I'm happy that you guys are uh, actually so much in spirit. Okay, so now... Uh, this is our A and this is our B and this is our C. So you come here, wait for the, so you put minus 6. The square root of B squared, which is 6 squared. Right, so you have exactly 2A, which is exactly 5 that way. And so what then do we get out of this here? So mm -hmm. what do we get out of this here? Right. 
right so it's going to be exactly x equal to it's negative 7.96 okay i'm excited that you so you super fast okay. right so well, what is under the square root here if you say six squared is 36 no oh, wait it's negative one comma nine three okay i'm excited that uh that's Lerato, right? Yes, okay. So you must continue, you must maintain that momentum. We, we need that momentum uh, moving forward, okay? So yeah, I'm excited that you guys are so, so much. Right, there is six squared plus four by five by seven. And it is actually um, apparently one, seven, six. Right. That's one seven six divided by ten. Right, so we're getting that x is minus six plus uh, minus one the square root of one seven six over ten, which means x equals minus six plus or minus the square root of one seven six out of what? Out of ten. What is uh, what are the factors of one seven six that can bring so much joy to us? Um, sixteen by eleven. So one seven six has the factor sixteen by eleven out of ten, and this means x is minus six plus or minus the square root of sixteen. The square root of eleven, which you divide by what by ten. Okay. And then we have minus six plus, what is the square root of 16? Okay, divide through by, by two, which is minus uh, three plus or minus two, the square root of 11 out of five. So which means that X is minus three plus, Two into the square root of into the square root of eleven, right? Which is minus three plus two in the square root of eleven out of five. Or oh, x equals minus three minus two into the square root of eleven out of what? Out of five. So these are the answers, but we can find the decimals of this. As the writer was saying, so the first one is the, well, this one, which is 0 0.73 to two decimal places, or x is approximately minus 1.93. Good. Okay, so... These are just warm up exercises. We're yet to get into serious business. We're yet to get into serious, serious business. Okay, let's look at the next question. The next question. Right, so the next question is this one um, X equals five divided by three X minus two. What are the what do we do here, anyone? Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to bring that back. What do we do here, anyone? Cross multiplication. Cross multiplication. Thanks. That's Tando, right? <laughs> right. So that is cross multiplication. So if x into uh, 3x minus 2 equals 5, anyone, what do we do next? We expand. We expand or we distribute. So we multiply through x by this and, and x by that. So which means it is 3x minus 2x equals 5. Oh, then we distribute. Yes. OK, five I'm excited. Negative, negative yes. 5. Yes. Okay. Equals 0. OK, good. Now we get to this point where we have 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. So, yeah, 3x squared 
minus 2x minus 5. Full zero. What do we do here, anyone? What do we do here, anyone? We use the quadratic formula. Okay, we can use the quadratic formula in case the factors are difficult to find. Uh, are these difficult to find? I agree. I mean, we have a choice. It depends if the the factors are difficult to find. Okay, so I know I use the correct formula because I realized in, in the previous one, we couldn't do anything else. Okay, we had no choice. But now we take the 3x squared, we multiply phase with minus 5 and c, but yeah, we get minus 15. Because 3 by 5 is 15 with the minus x squared. We have the factors of minus 15 that give minus 2. What are they? Okay, so they are actually minus 5x and 3x because they give minus 15, but when we add, we get minus 2. Okay, we can still use the correct formula, guys. We still can, but um, in this case, it's easier because there are, there are factors we can get. The correct formula works if, yeah, you can see you're sweating, but I'm going to give a, a characterization in terms of the discriminants that we can use uh, there, okay. If in case the factors are taking long, now we're bringing the minus five x here. We're bringing three x here, okay, and we're getting this. And then here we're taking the highest common factor from the first two uh, terms, and so taking out x from the first two, we have three x minus five plus three uh, x minus five equals zero which is 3x minus 5 into x plus 1 equals 0, which means, okay, you have x equals 5 out of 3, or x equals minus 1. Okay, so these are sort of the solutions to the problem, and we're continuing to solve a little bit more things. Any questions so far? No question. Right, we have another question, this one. 2x plus 5 over x equals 11, provided x is not 0. What do we do here, anyone? Okay, how do you solve x here, anyone? Is it too easy? Or, you, or maybe you can't see the question. Oh, you can't see the question. Can you see the question? Yes. Okay, what do we do first? It's too hard. Okay, we multiply, we, we, we consider the LCD, okay? It's like Yolanda was talking or somebody. The lowest common denominator is only X. The denominator is only X. So the lowest common denominator is X. And we multiply each of the terms by the lowest common denominator. We take two X multiplied by X. We have five over X, we multiply by X. We have 11, we multiply by X and this is exactly 2x squared plus 5 equals 11x, which is 2x squared minus 11x plus 5 equals 0. So you have 2x squared minus 11x. 
plus five equals zero. Okay, to factorize this, we can use the quadratic formula, yes, but we can use other methods as well. Okay, so um, we can use a couple of other methods to actually solve this. So um, we note that as a matter of fact, what do we do here now? And now we multiply two X squared by what? By five, and what are we getting? We're getting 10 X squared. So we actually therefore um, look for factors of 10 X squared that give minus 11, what are they? Factors of 10 X squared that give minus 11, what are those factors? Negative two and a positive five. Oh, no. Okay, I'm glad that you're thinking. <laughs> Very brilliant thinking there. What mm. are mm. those factors uh, that we can get here? I think 10 and one. Well done. That's minus 10 X minus x because minus 10x times minus x they give 10x squared but when you say minus 10 minus x you get minus 11 so those are the correct ones from tando right tando right so uh right that's correct so we have therefore um 10x minus x plus 5 equals 0. here the highest common factor is twice x we have x minus 5, we factor out, and we have minus x minus 5, we have x minus 5 into twice x minus 1 equals 0, which means x equals 5, x equals 1 over 2. So those are the answers here. Okay. So we're done solving this one. Okay, there are many things we can solve, obviously. Let us look at something called inequalities. Okay, you have done in school, um, in particular, let's look at inequalities. Right, inequalities. Okay, in this case, we need to solve for x. Right, how do we solve for x? We need to solve for x given, let's do something easy for the start. Um, if we given number one, x squared minus two x is less or equal to 15. What do we do here? Tango. I feel like we should form the standard form by taking 15 to the other side. Yes, we need to write this in standard form. And the standard form means that it is uh, the form ax squared plus bx plus c um, equals zero. It is in this form, the, uh, the standard form. Okay, then when we get to this point, uh, we can, we, we can uh, factorize this with ease. If it doesn't uh, easily factorize, we use the quadratic formula. So we have, we are spoiled for choice. We multiply x squared with minus 15, we get minus 15 x squared. And uh, we can see that we have uh, minus five x and what? And three x is, uh, is the factor. So that um, at this point, uh, we have x squared minus 5x plus 3x minus 15 is less or equal to 0. Okay, so what are we getting here? Right, so we have x squared minus 5x. We have x squared minus 5x. And then we have plus 3x minus 15. Plus 3x minus 15 is less or equal to 0. <laughs> right, so we factor out x and we have x minus 5 plus 3 into x minus 5 is less or equal to 0. x minus 5 is the highest common factor. It's the 
highest common factor, the HCF, and we factor it out, and we have x plus 3 is less or equal to 0. At this point, we choose something, we find what you call the critical, critical values. What are the critical values? So the x equals uh, 5 or x equals minus 3. Right, so if we have this x equals 5, x equals minus 3 x equals 5 or x equals minus 3. These are the critical values. So we have minus 3, 5. And then now we have x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 5, excuse. OK, I know there are many ways to solve this problem. But one of the methods is this one. Okay, uh, this method is called the sign table method. Uh, the other methods that I'm going to elaborate on that are very famous, but some of them are not good. Um, are not very good in mathematics, but are used by the teachers uh, in the curriculum to simplify issues, to simplify matters. So now at this point, if you take any number smaller than minus three, any arbitrary number, any random number smaller than minus three, like minus 10, what is minus 10 minus five? It's a minus 15, negative. Minus 10 plus three is a minus seven, negative. Between minus three and five is a zero. Zero minus five, it's minus. Zero plus three, it's a plus. Bigger than five, it's 10. 10 plus 10 minus 5 is a plus. 10 plus 3 is a 13 plus. Then what you do is you multiply the signs here. Okay, this this is called the sign table. I know you might be seeing it for the first time. Multiply this with that, and you get a what? You get a plus. Multiply because this is this times okay. this. Yeah, you multiply this by this, you get a minus. You multiply this by this, you get a plus. Okay. Yes, so there yeah, are many ways. But now, okay. yes, good. You look at the question. It was saying x minus 5 into x plus 3 is less than equal to 0. So in other words, you had x minus 5 into x plus 3 is less than equal to 0. Okay, when it's less than equal to 0, negative. It's here, which means minus 3 is less than equal to x, less than equal to Five. Okay, so it's negative between these two things. Negative between these two things. So the negative is between. How do you say between in mathematics? We so we put the x between minus three and five. Okay, to mean the minus. Why? Why the minus? Because this is saying less, less, less than zero. Less than zero is negative. Right. Okay. Let's look at another quadratic inequality. Right, if you look at the next question, for example, if you have 6x squared plus 13x minus 4 is greater or equal to 1. What do we do here? Yolanda, what do you think? What is the first step? What do we do? Uh, you take, I think you take one to the other side and then um, add it with a four. With yes. The like term. Yes, we group like terms together. So grouping like terms together, we transpose one to the other side, making it a negative one. And uh, we have 6x squared plus uh, 13x minus 5 is greater equal to 0. To factorize this, we have two choices. If it doesn't easily factorize, we use the quadratic, but the quadratic is very long. Or we use our usual method of factorization. This one is pretty straightforward, so yeah, we we good. Um, we multiply 6x squared with minus 5. Getting what? Minus 30x squared. So we take the factors of minus 30x squared that will give 
1313x squared. Okay. So it's easy. Somebody's going to be saying is what? What are the factors here of minus 30x squared? That will give 13x squared. Yeah, 15 and 2. All right. I know. Okay. I'm happy that you're excited. Right. So you have a 15x and minus 2x because. Uh, 15 minus two, times minus 2 is, 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 uh, is minus 30, but 15 minus 15x minus 2x is 13. So this gives us 6x squared plus 15x minus 2x minus that is greater or equal to 0. Okay, you factor out here 3 and x. Uh, which is 2x and a 5. Here you factor out negative, getting 2x plus 5. So you have 3x, which is 2x plus 5. 2x yeah. plus 5. Okay, let's see. Yes. Okay, the 2x plus 5 is, is so much of the highest common factor. So we have 2x plus 5 and 3x minus 1 is critical to 0. Okay, now some students have a challenge factorizing this. But when you take out the highest common factor, you cross this out. And when you cross this out, you'd have 3x minus 1. Right, and when you get to this point, you look for the critical values. So the x equals minus 5 over 2, or x equals 1 over 3. So 2x plus 5 into 3x minus 1. Write the critical values x equals minus 5 over 2, or x equals 1 over 3. And like we did before, we position everything on the number line. We put the negative number first, because minus 5 over 2 is negative, and then we put 1, one third afterwards, and we put x there. Um, we put x 2x plus 5 here, and we put 3x minus 1. Here we put 2x plus 5 into 3x minus 1. So less than minus 5 over 2, any negative number, maybe minus 100. And if you put it here, this is going to be negative, like minus 10. 3 by minus 10 is minus 30, minus 1 is minus 31, negative. Okay, between a negative number and a positive number on the number line, take a 0. Um, 0 plus 5 here, it's going to be uh, a positive number, excuse. It's going to be a positive number, so this is positive. And uh, putting a 0 in the place of x, 3 times 0 minus 1. 3 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is, is it's a negative. Any number bigger than one third um, can be any random number, maybe even five, right? Two times five plus five, it's positive, it doesn't matter. Three by five is 15 minus one, it's, it's positive, okay? So, and, and now this says you multiply these times this, you multiply negative by negative, you get a plus. Um, you have here, um positive by negative you have a negative and here you you have a positive here so which means therefore um you have here a plus okay a minus here and a plus there right so now what we then do next is to then say if this is greater or equal to zero, we look for the positives. Where are the positives occurring? 
Um, the positive is this side and the other one is on the other side. So, which means the solutions here are X is less or equal to minus five over two. Right. So X is less or equal to minus five over two or X is bigger than that. You can write it on the next slide. So you can come and then say, um, X is less or equal to minus five over two is this side plus is this side. So it's on the less than to the left is less. So X is less than minus five over two. Or X. Or X is bigger equal to one third. Okay, so yeah. Okay, let's look at another quadratic that is very... Um, sorry, before you continue, um, yes. can you also please show, because uh, I know uh, uh, sometimes at school, uh, well, at school, uh, yes. when I was still doing it, they showed us, like, on the number line, not the sign table, whereby uh, they did a thing whereby you draw. Uh, the... You draw the number line and then put uh, some signs on it, is that? No, like on the number line. Uh, yes. Joy. What's this? The x. Um, oh my gosh. Okay, let me see. Two x plus five into three x minus two x plus five. Okay, I'm gonna do something here. Yeah, like x. work out the whole thing, eh, as it is, and like as you did the work out, and then the only difference is there by the table. They do the Cartesian plane and then draw on the Cartesian plane. Oh, yes. No, yeah, I know that is the shortcut. Um, that shortcut is very problematic. I, well, It's used sometimes, okay, but it must be used very cautiously because it's not universally accepted, and that is the reason. Oh. Um, yeah, it, it is challenges with universal acceptance. Okay, we're going to discuss that because if you have 2x plus 5 into 3x minus 1, right? So yeah. you have 2x plus 5 into 3x minus 1, okay, 2x plus 5 into 3x minus 1 is greater or equal to 0. Yes, is greater or equal to 0. So you can use the, the, the you obtain the uh, critical values. What are the critical values? This one or x is one thread, like this, right? Okay, now you then draw the, 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 this, the x-axis like this. And then you analyze the fact that this one is going to have a minimum mm. vertex. Okay, it's going to have a minimum vertex because so the coefficients of x here is positive, positive. So it's going to have a minimum vertex and then you have minus five over two, one third. Right, and then now you're analyzing the part where the quadratic, because this is quadratic, where the graph is uh, greater or equal to zero. So the graph is equal to zero here and the graph equals zero there. Okay, let me use a different color. So the graph is zero there and it's zero there, but it's greater than, it's greater than zero when you go up, greater than zero when you go up like that. So which means that at this point, uh, you have that X is less or equal to minus five over two or X is bigger or equal to one third, like that. So, okay, these answers are the same as those. So you can use this kind of a graph. Is this kind of, is, is it the graph you're talking about? Something like that? Yolanda? Yes, it's the one I was talking about. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Okay, now normally they ask these particular questions. And here is one small little question. Um, for which? Right, for which? Values of X.
is uh, x divided by x minus 3 real for which values of x is x the square root of x of x minus 3 real what do we do here anyone are looking for the solution to this one we need to take up the square root we need to somehow obviously imagine the square root taken off um good um any other suggestion anyone Anyone? 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 Too easy. Too boring. I'm not getting any answer from you guys, and I'm sad. I'm so sad. Please talk to me. We're all thinking of the same thing, removing the square root sign. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. Thank you, folks. Thank you, good students. We need to somehow remove the square root. But to analyze this question, we're saying, for which values of x is this real? So now for this to be real, we need to realize that we have x into x minus 3 real. Okay, real means that whatever is under the square root, whatever is under the square root must be greater or equal to zero because square roots that are real are square roots of positive numbers or zero. So we don't take square roots of negative numbers in, in, at school level. We don't take square roots of negative numbers. Right, so we restrict that we restrict the, the whatever is under the square root to be non-negative, non-negative greater or equal to zero. So we then have to solve x over x minus three is greater or equal to zero. What do we, what do we then do here? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, we need to solve for x here. So we must get the critical values. Right, and the critical values, where do they okay? Are they okay when the numerator is zero? Or where, when x is three? In which case, therefore, we put x and then we put x minus 3 here and we draw our number line like this, right? And if we do that, we put here 0, we put here 3, and this is the number line of x values. Beneath here, we put x over x minus 3. Right, in which case, therefore, we draw like this. Okay, the, the, the sign table method is more universal, uh, and I prefer the use of the sign table because it's more universal. It can solve any question that involves inequalities. Okay, just using signs only. Right, so now 
using the sine table method. Sine table. Right, so now pick a random number that is smaller than zero, like minus two, you put in a place of x, you're gonna have a negative. Putting it here, minus two, minus three is gonna be negative. Right, bigger than zero, between zero and three, maybe one. Putting a one, the place of x is gonna be a plus one. One minus three is gonna be a negative two. Bigger than three, pick a random number like five. Putting in a place of x, put five, it's a plus. Uh, five minus three, it's a plus. Okay, this says divide, it's x divided by x minus three, you divide, you have a plus, you divide, you have a minus, you divide, you have a plus. So at this point, we are looking for where this is greater or equal to zero, greater or equal to zero. Where is greater or equal to zero? Positive, positive this side, positive that side. So which means positive on the left of zero, which means x is a, less than zero or less than or equal to zero <clears throat> or x is bigger or equal to in particular x is only bigger than three okay x cannot be equal to three because if ever if ever x equals three then we have three minus three in the denominator and it's division by zero so we must restrict x to be greater than zero strict strictly greater than zero or x is less or equal to um z um uh, zero Okay, x is less equal to zero or x is bigger than three strictly. Right, here's a homework. Right, I'm not gonna be long. We're not gonna be long today because it's our just, it's our test session. Solve for x. Right, so at this point, uh, we are expecting you to solve for x given six. Okay, I'm going to send you this video even if you're not copying everything, okay? This video, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you the link. So um, you left the chance to sort of watch this video. Okay, let me see. Um, plus 2x minus uh, plus 3, which is less or equal to 0. Okay, so this is one question we need to solve for x, so you need to try your best there. Okay, there's something very interesting that we need to talk about, and let's talk about exponents. Right, let's book, let's speak about exponents. What do we say about exponents? If we need to solve for x, if we have five to the power two x plus one is equal to one twenty five. What do we do here, anyone? Two x plus one here at the top. Two x plus one here at the top. What do we do here, anyone? Tando, Yolande, Yolande. Lerato. Um, ish. I am not sure. The thing is, I don't have a calculator right now. But um, you must try to have a base, uh, which is the same as the other one, which is five. But I think it's going to be five something. And then... That is your mm -hmm. right? Like, I just... Okay, so yeah. It's it's five the power to one, two, one, and it's five cubed. Five cubed. So if the bases are the same, you equate the... Yes, yes. X plus one equals three. 
two x equals three minus one. What is three minus one? Equals t. So if two x is equal to two, you divide the left by two and the right by two, so that x equals what? X equals one. one. All right, I think I must thank you for joining us, guys. I was testing the systems today, okay? So I'm gonna send you the link. Are, are you, Yolanda, are you connected with uh, Tando? He's my brother. Oh, all right, excellent, yeah, they told me, they told me. Okay, that's excellent. So what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna send you the link to the video when I, in the next couple of minutes, so you can just pass, watch the video. On Saturday, we're going to meet at 4 p.m. and we're going to have a two-hour discussion on everything mathematics, but a lot of things, okay? So today, it was just... Okay. Yeah. It was so where are you going to send the link? The link, I'm going to send it through the contact of the, of the person who communicated to you about me. There's a, okay. number, there's a WhatsApp number. The, there's somebody who told me that um, uh, there's Tando who needs assistance with um, school. And Tando is in grade 11, right? Yes. All right. Yeah, the kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. But they told me, so I'm going to send it on, what's, on the WhatsApp number of that person who told me that you guys need help. You know, that kind of thing. So I'm going to send the link of the video so you can watch this video. But our next lesson on Saturday, it's going to be lit at 4 p.m. It's going to be more mathematics, two hours of mathematics from the beginning of mathematics to the end of mathematics. Okay. Right. So thanks, everybody. I'll see you Saturday at 4 p.m. But in case there's a lesson in the middle, I'll always let you know because I can have like short, short lessons um, at any given time, but I'm going to let you know in advance if there's a lesson that we can have, preferably in the morning if the lesson is going to be late in the evening so that you can prepare yourselves, et cetera, et cetera. Or the day before, I can always uh, mention a lesson, but Saturday 4 p.m., we will we always have lessons at that time, okay? So thanks, guys. Obviously, I'm going to send you the timetable as well, and you're going to talk more. But yeah, today was a trial lesson, and I'm glad that I was able to talk to you. But see you guys on Saturday at 4 p.m. with everything mathematics from A to Z. All right. Goodbye, guys. Good evening, and I'm going to send the link soon. Next couple of minutes. Thank you. Goodbye.